Welcome to Aflame Ministry TV. This is a show about ministry of many kinds for people of all faiths. And we talk about, sometimes with guests, sometimes just with me, uh, about many different aspects of ministry. Today I want to share some things with you that have just kind of been popping up into my awareness for the day. And the first was from the singer, uh, um, Roberta Flack. And she had um, some very well-known hits, called, like The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face and Killing Me Softly With His Love. But those were back in the 70s and 80s, so I'm dating myself with that. But um, you can still hear them and things like that. But she once said, the situation you live in doesn't have to live in you. The situation you live in doesn't have to live in you. That's a powerful statement. It reminds me of something that one of my mentors, Barry Neil Kaufman said, that is the way we choose to see the world creates the world we see. You know, it, think about that. Both of those. The situation you live in doesn't have to live in you, meaning we have choices. Yes, the things around us may not be the way we want them to be, but that doesn't mean we have to reflect that in how we see life and how we see ourselves. And the other one, the way we choose to see the world creates the world we see, very similar because it says the way I perceive the world, if it's, if I, you know, if I see the world as um, against me or as uh, any individual as against me, a situation against me, um, that I'm stuck in something, that will keep me from seeing other possibilities. It will keep me seeing those things and only those things. The way we choose to see the world creates the world we see. But there's something else I wanted to share with you. And that comes from the work of Viktor Frankl. He was um, born in Austria um, and was a psychiatrist at the beginning of World War II. He, along with his whole family, was captured by the Nazis, and he was in some of the most notorious concentration camps. Um, his wife, his parents, they both perished in those camps. Victor survived. And based on his experience in those camps, he developed a whole different a type of psychology and treatment for people. But, and he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And Frankl uh, is F R A N K L, Victor is V I K T O R. Um, and he said this uh, in, on page 86, at least in my version of the book. Um, He's talking about, we who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts, comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. And then he goes on in the next page to say, it is this spiritual freedom, which cannot be taken away, that makes life meaningful and purposeful. Spiritual freedom, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. Even in a concentration camp, even in the very worst of circumstances, we still have the opportunity to choose our own way. 
may not seem like very good choices, but we still have those choices to choose our own way. We still have the opportunity to choose how we see the world, how we see ourselves, how we see other people, and how we respond to how we see that. Um, you know, in the concentration camp, there were people who literally gave away their last piece of bread. That was not an exaggeration, not just a figure of speech. That literally happened in Viktor Frankl's experience. And they chose to see something different uh, than the immediate surroundings, than what the people who were holding them captive wanted them or expected them to see. We have the same choice. Uh, you know, I don't know what your circumstances are right now. Uh, I know that um, as I'm recording this, we are in the midst of a worldwide global pandemic caused by the uh, COVID-19 virus. And it, it has affected um, businesses, it's affected people, definitely affected people's health and, um, and livelihoods and uh, the economy, uh, all kinds of things. And there are people who um, don't necessarily want to wear a mask. They have their different reasons for that. Um, but, you know, saying it's their freedom that's being impinged upon, some of them say that, by wearing a mask. And there are others who say, oh, that's only the civic responsibility is always to wear a mask to protect other people uh, as well as oneself. And, you know, how do we see these things? That no matter what time we're in, as you watch this and see this, no matter what the circumstances are, there are going to be people who say one thing and there are people who will say the opposite. There are those who will say, um, you know, it's too dry because there hasn't been rain or it's too hot. And other people will say, you know, it's a pleasant day out. This is just the way we like it. So, or choose to say, you know, this is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, even if it's storming, even if, um, you know, there may be uh, inclement weather of some sort. If it's uh, winter time where you live, it could be a snowstorm. Uh, it could be an ice storm. It could be um, a beautiful day when you wish there were some snow because it's so cold and the frost is getting too deep into the ground. You know, there are all kinds of different possibilities. The way we choose to see the world creates the world we see. And as Viktor Frankl said, we have that choice always. We have that choice. We are created by God. Um, in the first chapter of Genesis, God created us human beings in God's own image. And one of the main things about that is that we have choices and see how we see the world, how we understand ourselves, how we understand other people, part of that choice. That's part of what it means to be a child of God, to be created in God's own image, is how we choose to see the world. God created everything and chose to see it and pronounce it all as good, including us. And even when we have, uh, in God's terms, gone astray, missed the mark, which is the um, Hebrew understanding in the Old Testament, one of them, of sin. We've missed the mark about our relationship with God. We've missed the mark about how we are to live in relationship with other people, how they are to relive it, live in relationship with us. We miss the mark in many ways. But God still chooses to see us human beings through the eyes of love. 
through the eyes of desiring to have that relationship rebuilt, through the eyes of caring about us and expecting and asking us to care about one another as well. The way we choose to see the world creates the world we see. The spiritual freedom that we have, what we choose in how we understand life. Roberta Flack, the situation you live in doesn't have to live in you. You know, I don't know which one of those you want to take as the, the primary way you have of understanding something. But each of those has a lot of power in them. The last of the human freedoms that no one can take away from us. But we can willingly give it up. And we do that when we allow the circumstances around us, the, the, work, the situation we live in, to control how we live, to live in, that we allow it to control and live in us, or the way we choose to see the world to create a negative world that we see, or to see other people as evil, as bad. They may do bad things. I'm not saying people don't do bad things, sometimes even very evil things. But do we see them as evil? Do we see them as bad? How do we choose to see people? How do we choose to see this world? It makes a huge difference, a huge, huge difference in how we see people whose faith differs from our own, how we see those who have different political views from our own, how we see family members that we disagree with, how we respond in each of those cases, even how we see someone who cuts us off in traffic. It happens, sometimes intentionally, yes, sometimes unintentionally. I don't know about you, but there have time, been times where I've moved over in a lane and checked it, and only as after I moved, if I realized that there's a vehicle really close behind me, and I've probably cut that person off unintentionally. Yeah, um, that, yeah, does that make me a bad person? Well, it doesn't make me the best of drivers at the moment, perhaps, but I'm not a bad person not intending any kind of harm to someone else, not uh, evil um, in that respect, the way we choose to see the world. I choose to see the world as a place of God's creation, a place where God declared everything and everyone to be good. I don't always understand all of that, I don't understand why there are hurricanes or tornadoes or ice storms that knock out power and cause people's lives to people to lose their lives. I don't understand all of that. Or a tsunami or an earthquake. I, I don't pretend to understand all of that. But I trust God and I trust that maybe someday by God's grace, I will understand. I trust that even though there are other people who disagree significantly with me, perhaps some of them would even disagree violently with me, that somewhere inside of them, there is something good, something somehow God loves them, and God calls you and me to love them too. I trust that uh, the birds I see or the trees I see, that uh, as part of God's creation, they are good. Even when a branch falls, maybe it'll damage my house. Uh, maybe you know, it'll ruin, damage a fence, you know, whatever it may be, that still, 
that doesn't mean God doesn't love me. That doesn't mean that God's out to get me or judge me. It means that's part of creation. And that's the way the world works. Branches fall off. People die. People uh, do things that aren't so nice. Not because God declares them to do that. Not because they are uh, evil people. But we miss the mark. Do we see the world, therefore, as evil? Uh, the world as a gloom and doom place? Or do we exercise our spiritual freedom and choose to see something more? Choose to hold on to that vision of life, that vision of love that we see in God, that God gives to each of us when God declared us to be children of God. That's something God declares to us. It's not something we earn, but it is something God gifts us with. So, you know, how do you see the world today? Have you given up that spiritual freedom and allowed other people to shape how you see the world? Or are you allowing the situation you're in to shape how you see the world? Do you think you have to have everything perfect and lovely in life in order to be happy? That's allowing the situations of life to dictate what you live in, how you see the world, the situation you live in. So, you know, think about that. And as you think about that, I encourage you, if you have questions or would like to continue this conversation, to please reach out to me. Um, you can get in touch with me at aflameministryconsulting.com or on my Facebook page, which is also Aflame Ministry Consulting. And um, you can find me also on LinkedIn at K Panning. Um, I'm in all of those places, and I would love to have a conversation with you and see, you know, if this is something, uh, a way of looking at the world that you agree with, um, maybe there's other ways we can work together. If you have questions about this or are troubled about how you see the world, reach out, whether it's to me or to someone else, to help you uh, see perhaps a different way of understanding the world, of yourself, of other people. So until next time, I always end each of my shows asking you to do three things, or excuse me, two things. The first is to find three things each and every single day that you're grateful for, a minimum of three. That's part of finding how you choose to see the world. Are there things that go on in your life that you can be grateful for every day? They're there. Sometimes it means we have to look for them, but they are there. And then secondly, always try to find one way to share a little bit of God's love with someone else. A smile, a thank you, wishing somebody happy birthday, um, sending a greeting card to someone who's shut in during this time of, uh, of the, the pandemic. You know, anything doesn't have to be momentous, but sometimes just receiving that one call, uh, a card in the mail, for someone that could be very momentous. And it's something you can do. So until next time, God's peace and God's love to each and every one of you.